Hi, my name's Jules. Welcome to my journal where I chat on a bit about the crafty side of my life. Today is the 5th of August and this is journal number 60. I live in West Sussex in England with my husband Pete and our gorgeous Whippet Mabel. Um, what else do I say? Oh, show notes will be down below this video on YouTube. And you can find me as So Sweet Violet on Instagram and on Ravelry. And you can find my shop where I sell all sorts of gorgeous things, cute things and lovely things for fellow makers and crafters, um, such as project bags, patchwork kits, well, English paper piecing. I always grew up calling English paper piecing patchwork. That's what I knew it as, so I must stays in my head. But English paper piecing kits, um, knitting jewellery, pretty washi tape, things that I have come across and I thought was just cute, adorable, or just beautiful. I'm the designer, the maker, and the curator of So Sweet Violet, but there's a big change. Um, this has been coming along for quite a while, but finally, Bryony, my daughter, also known as Sweet Bee, has joined So Sweet Violet. So we're a little team now and it's so fun. It is really, really fun. Although she is a little bit like a puppy at the moment, really excited and she has so many ideas. So we've had to buy a whiteboard and some whiteboard pens just to keep track of all these ideas and then she'll come up with an idea and that'll spring an idea in my head and we have so many ideas. So it's gonna be lots and lots of new and exciting, beautiful things coming to So Sweet Violet and I could not be happier about it. I have had to be a grown up though. I've been doing a lot of grown uping. Um, yes, a bit scary, but um, because obviously I have to pay her a wage and all sorts of, all sorts of things that I never expected well, obviously I expected to pay her if she joined me, but I don't know, I feel like I'm, even calling myself a businesswoman feels weird, but I feel like I stumbled into being a businesswoman. It was never really a plan as such. As a child, I just loved playing shops and post offices, and I always wanted my own shop. So that was kind of a dream, but kind of just has evolved really slowly over the last, I think it's about 11 years. Yeah, I think it's about 11 years. And um, thank you to all of you who have supported me and encouraged me and just been so kind. My business has blossomed. So yeah, Bryony has joined and her job title is Head of Pretty Things. I think mine's going to be boss of pretty things. And she's going to be head of pretty things. Not really sure. <laughs> um, so we have been super busy. I haven't got much crafting done, to be honest, because we have been buying and building new furniture. Yesterday, we were hoping not to have to buy a new sewing machine. But her sewing machine is not very... Not very reliable so we've had to invest some money in a new sewing machine spending money is quite scary when you're a small business because yeah it just is <laughs> so we've been to ikea and we've bought her a desk and a chair and we've bought a cupboard for all of our um the materials that we use not the fabrics so much but all the findings for the stitch markers and rope that I use for my rope bowls and I can't even remember what's in my cupboard now. Our cupboard. We have mood boxes, which was Bryony's great idea. So we have a box and if we come up with a really exciting theme like bees, 
which obviously we're going to have a big sweet bee update because it had to be bees didn't it for my sweet bee um we have a box a mood box with bees so we have a lovely collection of fabrics from my stash gorgeous charms and stamps and it's fun we've been having a lot of fun but I haven't had a lot of crafting time as I've said and I haven't had a lot of filming time either so there is a little vlog at the end of this video um, and when you'll see Brian and work sewing on sequins and things um, yeah but I hope to show you more behind the scenes anyway we need to crack on with some knitting I think right I'm just gonna have some of my tea don't think I've shown you this mug but I love it Isn't that gorgeous? My lovely friend Chrissy from Chrissy Crafts gave this to me for my 50th birthday. And I love it so much. And I'm drinking Moondrop Dreams. I'm hoping, well, as I mentioned on my last podcast, um, I have fibromyalgia and some other issues as well. I'm feeling a little bit wobbly today, actually, and a bit of a weird head. So this has got lavender. It's, it's rooibos with apple pieces, rose hip, lavender, lemon peel, orange peel. So I'm hoping the lavender is soothing and calming. But I really wanted to do a podcast today. I'd really love to get into a good routine of doing alternate weeks. So yeah, I didn't want to miss today. So let's do some in the making have i actually talked about everything i wasn't supposed to talk to you about Bryony until later but i got overexcited okay so first up in the making is actually a new in the making and oh it's so cute look how tiny it is well actually this you could think that's really huge you think well she's making a really massive sock or a hat but it's not it's the peanut vest by tin can knits how well you can see oh yeah pretty well oh it's so adorable i'm not doing the color work although i really want to get better and more confident at color work so if i like this little vest when it's finished I may do another one and do the colour work. Um, I was watching lovely Amy, um, Amy Florence from Stranded Dye Works. Was it last week or the week before perhaps? And she'd knit a couple of these and they were just so adorable. And I think, I think it's a really useful item for a baby's wardrobe actually. And I know a few little babies coming at the moment so that, I thought I'd whip one up. Well, I say whip one up, it's not really been whipped up. It's basically, I think I started this just after my last podcast. So I haven't really whipped it up. It's funny actually, it looks kind of stripy on the screen, but it doesn't look like that at all in real life. The camera does give everything you show a bit of a higher contrast. But this yarn I've had in my sash quite a while and it's Tannis Fibre Arts Pure Wash DK. Um, this yarn was from Canada, I think. But what's so good about it is that it's machine washable and tumble dryable, it says. So that's amazing. So I thought that was that is the perfect yarn. And it's such a pretty colour. And the colour is called Tidal. It's organic merino. Really interesting. I wish Tanish Fiber Arts wasn't in Canada, <laughs> but they are. Um, somehow I did a boo-boo when I was skeining up. And you know you put it on, you put your skein on the swift and cut the little ties um i obviously cut a bit more than the little ties because i have two balls instead of one so i hope that doesn't give me issues when i start the second ball and i hope i don't get like a line 
but um I think it'll be okay and I don't think it'll matter too much anyway but it's just adorable and um I'm actually using the recommended needle size which is unusual for me and I'm doing the which size am I making naught to three months the smallest size and yeah it is cute though but look at that colour work it's really sweet I need to get brave and do that I don't know why colour work's so scary <laughs> so on here let's show you this little stitch marker because these are new in my shop it's so pretty like little cube crystals um, and we have a set in the shop Bryony made these actually I'm gonna stand up see if I can show you there we go so there's a pinky one a peachy one a yellow one whoops a green one a blue one and a purple one they're really pretty and they're quite nice big rings I think I think these fit up to, what's it, an eight, size eight millimetre needles, so they're quite nice big ones. I like to have a range of different size rings in my shop. There we go, so that's those. Um, yeah, so that's my first in making. I'm going to put that away. So I'm still in, well I say I'm still in, I'm in my new location again. But finding it hard to get the right position because I really want those pretty lights in and above the pretty lights you can't really see but there's some quilts and some flowers and a fairy and some baskets or a basket but unless the camera goes that way further no hang on that's not what I'm trying to say I'm trying to say I'd like to be higher up in your I'd like my head to be here and here, like higher and closer to you and still get that in, but I can't. So I'm hoping this angle is okay. Didn't really need to know that, did you? <laughs> okay, so that was my first in the making. Second in the making, this has given me brain ache, actually. It is, should be, this, yeah, this should be the easiest thing in the world. So, <laughs> for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles, um, which is going on all this year, uh, there's a link, right, left, there's a link to the video about it up here. What's that mark on the screen? Oh, you see that? I thought it was a funny cube on the screen, but it's not, it's the light switch over there. <laughs> That's weird. Um, what was I saying? The Rainbow Sock Chronicles Knit Along is going for the whole of this year and is hosted by me and my lovely friend Kelly, Kelly Lay, who is also part of Lay Family Yarns. Um, Kelly has the Finish Things thread in her Ravelry group and I have the Chatter thread in my Ravelry group. I just drew a prize actually for July. So yes, prizes every month, you know all of this, I know you do, but there's a link up there if you want to go and find out more, if you're new around here and haven't had it before, but it's very fun. Um, I suppose I should say the, the actual knit along is to knit a pair of socks every month in a rainbow of colors. So there we go, that's that. <laughs> so anyway, I'm feeling a little bit socked out, if I'm being honest, because I have been knitting a pair of socks with the Rainbow Sock Chronicles each month and designing socks. And I just didn't want to knit another pair of socks. So July's colour was blue. And um, I sent my yarn to Kelly. <laughs> At Lay Family Yarns to be turned into a sock snake. There we go. But look how long it is. 
nuts double. So what I did is probably the wrong thing. I was asking Kelly, I did the cuffs and I messaged Kelly, I was like, Kelly, I don't know what to do. It's gonna make a really long sock because these are gonna be for Pete for Christmas. And he has obviously big feet, big earthy, but not, he's not Hagrid, is he? So, so I knit the cuff and I said to Kelly, what do I do? And she said, probably the best thing you could have done was, what did she say now? Knit a toe. <laughs> I can't remember. Was it knit a cuff? what she said. I think she said knit a cuff, add a heel, where you, so you choose how long you want the leg to be, so you add an afterthought heel, which I've never really liked, but she has recommended Kirby Worby, so I'm going to try that. And then you can calculate after that how long the foot needs to be before you put the toe on. So you cut it, put the toe on, and then you do exactly the same again. So you do a cuff, put the heel in, toe on, and you're left with a piece without a cuff on, like that I have. Pretend there's no cuff there. And then you can make shorty socks out of it. I think that's what she said. So I don't really know what to do because I've just got a huge snake with cuffs. I <laughs> I think I'm going to be end up. I'm going to end up with a random piece of sock blank in the middle because now I think what I need to do now is put the heel in, calculate where I need to start the toe and cut it. Now I'll have a sock, won't I? I think so. So I'm going to do the same this end, and I'm going to end up with a random piece in the middle. What do I do with that? Any suggestions what I can do with that would be brilliant. I have never used a snock, a snock snake, a snock snake before. So yeah, I just wanted to show you my progress keeper. Isn't she beautiful? A little fairy just chilling out in the forest with a flower. Perhaps she's reading her book. I don't know, but she's very pretty. Anyway, she's in my shop. Um. And the contrast I'm going to use is this out of my stash. I don't know what it is, but it's very nice and I think it'll make it good and manly. So I've been doing so much sorting out because I needed to make space for my, my busy bee. <laughs> And I have been sorting out all of my craft things. Oh my goodness, it's terrible. But the trouble is, I love everything I have. So I think I said last week I put, I had put most of it in the cupboard that's here, um, but I'm still going and the cupboard is chock a blocker. I did say my last episode that I would show you the cupboard, but I haven't got around to that yet, but I will do. Hopefully next time, we'll see. Um, oh, and I have a really exciting in the making. Let me have some of my tea. Do you know, it feels a little bit autumny here. It's actually nice. I can actually see out the window from where I'm sitting. There's a road, this is the front of our house, and there's a road just over there and I can just see trees and a telephone cable where the pigeons sit. So basically the pigeons can just sit there and eyeball me. There's none at the moment. Um, and the weather is quite cool. Love it. It's so nice. Right. Okay, if you've been with me for a few years, you may remember my excitement about a dishcloth I made. I called it the wondrous dishcloth and honestly it revolutionised revolutionized my life. Um, I loved it, I loved designing it. It was just, 
I don't know, I was very addicted to them. And I, I love them and use them every single day of my life, still now. Um, but that has happened again. This is not a dishcloth this time, it's a washcloth. I use a linen washcloth in the shower when I have a shower, obviously. And I've only got one. And so it's tricky to get it clean and washed and clean and washed between showers. So I decided that I needed loads more wash mitts. So I thought, hmm, I could make improvements to the one I'm using, so I'll have a go. Anyway, after, let me show you attempt number five. So this is attempt number five. Okay, so it's a little mitt with a hangy loop. Look at this. And a bow. Honestly, I just absolutely love it. It's just adorable. But I thought this was a bit pointy. So I've got number six on the go. But it's it's just lovely. Let me take my bunny ring off. Let me put it on and show you. Look, it's, oh, it's just, Lovely, I love it. <laughs> I made these, well, th let's say this. I made this out of linen, and this is Quince & Co Sparrow, I believe. Yes, Quince & Co Sparrow, which is 100% organic linen, um, and the colorway is Sky 225. Is the label. I made it out of linen because linen is much more exfoliating than cotton. You could make these out of cotton. Um, I did make my one of my first samples out of cotton, but it got ripped back because it was way too big. This is the Perfect snuggy size. Um, I did one side textured. I'm sorry if my chair's squeaking so much. One side plain. It's got a little eye cord hangy loop. A gorgeous bow. I think the bow's showing up a bit weird. Let me let me tidy her up. Oh, gorgeous bow. This bow's stitched on, but it's super, super simple. Um, and a rib, so it's a bit like a mitten without a thumb. And I love it, I love it so much. But I think this one is a little too pointy. So I've got the next one on the go, which I am knitting out of. Um, where's my label? BC Garn Lino which is also 100% linen, um, which is really lovely. But if I'm comparing the two, I don't know if I can might pick it up. If I compare the two, this one has a better stitch definition than this one. And I think this will have better exfoliating possibilities than this one although this one is still lovely my preferred yarn is the quince and co but here's the drawback oh funny color that's better um quince and co is double the price i can't remember the exact prices but i think this is about oh, i think quince and go is about 11 pounds for 50 grams. I think this is about five pounds or five pound 50. So I say either or definitely, and they're both linen. Um, this is a beautiful color though. This is the BC Lino. Um, I wonder, oh, I've got very mixed. I have so many yarns in here. Would you like to see how many I've got? Ah, oh, I don't think there's a, oh, colour 48, 
let's see what I've got in my bag. I have, this started out being one, as you can see it's been unravelled, but that turned out to be too wide. I made a white one, this is my first one. Okay, um, this had a bow, an eye cord bow, but I uh, didn't think it was pretty enough and it's a bit big, but I shall use that. I have already used it and it, it works really well, except it's a bit big and it does fall off my hand a bit. I've got this, this is another BC, is it BC? BC Garn Lino. Um, <laughs> okay, this one. <laughs> This one is another lino. Um, I have some white. Oh, this actually, this one, the white one. It's just bright. This was a Quince and Co Sparrow. Oh, that's interesting. This one, this one has been used and washed. And you can see the difference, it has softened up quite a lot. So possibly, I need to use them all and wash them all and I'll get back to you, but yeah. Oh, what else have I got in here? Oh, this is the leftover Quince and Co Sparrow. Um, and this morning, before I started recording, I had a delivery of <laughs> Quince and Co Sparrow from Loop of London. So I have enough yarn to make a lot of washcloths. I'm not sure how much they take precisely because I keep making changes, but I think, I think these can be made out of 25 grams if not, it might be just the bow might push it over, but then I think you could use leftovers for the bow, really. Um, oh yeah, obviously this is a pattern I'm designing. I don't think I said that. Um, this is basically where most of my knitting time has gone and most of my excitement. I'm just mad about it. I just love it. So you put your hand in, you can wash your face. You can use this side to wash your face. And you can turn it around and then wash your body in this side. But what I like to do is I like to put the soap in as well. Let's pretend, let's pretend this is soap. So I put the soap in. It doesn't slip like soap. There we go. So you put the soap in your hand and you just go for it. I look like a snowman. It's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. I really do. It's the thing I'm most excited about that I've made for a really long time. Um, the pattern hasn't, I haven't finished writing it up. I'm almost there. This one is just waiting for its ribbing. I'm at the point to put the ribbing on. And then I need to do the eye cord hanger and then the bow. I think I'm gonna do the bow in the same color on this one. I wish I knew what colour this one was. I think it's probably colour 48, but I can't promise that. There's lots of nice colours in this BC garn, um, but I found with the Crimson Coast Sparrow, it's really hard to get at the moment, obviously to do with Covid or Brexit or both. Um, there's only a few colours available. I think I got I've no idea, I can't remember. Um, oh, let me show you this cute little progress keeper. Oh, another little fairy sitting on the moon. <laughs> she looks really pretty on that colour, doesn't she? Okay, so that was a lot of excitement, wasn't it, about a washcloth. Do you think I should call it Wondrous Wash Knit? Or should I call it something else, like... I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, help me out on that. I just don't know if it would confuse people if I called it wondrous. 
I can leave this one out now, can't I? And I can use that. Oops, oh, I've got stuff going everywhere. Okay, that is all of my in the making. Let's have some tea. That is nice tea. Okay, so can you see over there? That is one of my finished things. And the other one, where is it? Oh, it's here. And the other one is this. It's a litmus cowl. Oh, it's so pretty. I was watching lovely Gem, who is Gemma Esprit Designs. And she has a podcast. Is it Off Cuts? I think it's called Off Cuts. She, oh, she does beautiful paper cutting and beautiful knitting as well. And she's joining in with the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. So that's fun. But she made basically an identical one of these on her, well, showed it on her podcast. And I loved it so much. I contacted her and said, do you mind if I copy? Because I just love it so much. So these yarns were all out of my stash, really. Everything. I didn't have to buy anything. So this yarn here, the, the one that's repeated, is a speckly one and that is by Cozy Posy Yarn Co which is Antonella and I think it's called Little Darling and it's just a beautiful cream base with speckles and all of the rest of these yarns are they weren't even beautiful bits actually they were just minis that I had look that obviously it's rainbow it's the year of the rainbow so where did it start? I think. Okay, right. So it started here. Oh, look at it. So pretty. I don't know why the camera is so bright. Look at that. And that's the end one. And I just repeated it twice. Um, the pattern is the Litmus Cow by Amy Florence. It's a free pattern. I don't want to mess my hair up because I've got my bun again today and I have so many hairpins in <laughs> because it's not really quite long enough to make a proper bun so it has to be pinned within an inch of its life to stay there. So I won't put it on but it's one of those ones that you wear double like this. Oh it's so beautiful, it's so soft, it's all sock yarns, four ply or fingering weight. Um, yeah, and you graph the ends together. This is my grafting point here. So you just make a big tube. I think it's professional cast on, knit a huge tube, and then kitchen the other two ends together. And I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. It really kept me happy in some tricky times. So that's my litmus cowl. Um, let me show you my jumper. This I finished absolutely ages ago. Not wearing it. I should have worn it actually because it's not that hot today. Maybe next time I, I will wear this depending on weather. Um, so it's the Tulip Sweater by Gorgeous Melody of B Mandarines. I knit it so long ago, I can't remember the needle size or the size I knit, but I'm pretty sure it's on my Ravelry project page. But look at that hem. Oh, just, I literally love it. I think perhaps I should have made it a tiny bit longer. I mean, it looks beautiful on this dress, but it would be way too short to wear with jeans. Even with a top underneath, I don't think I'd, I'd be able to dare to do that. I messed up my short rows a little bit. Here, oh, it's a bit rubbish. That's obviously the back. So, I used King Cole Forest, which is a recycled iron weight yarn. 
and the colour is Y Forest or Weir Forest. I'm not quite sure how you say that. But um, I really like the yarn. It's really good value, really, really pretty colours. I have this, some of this in um, kind of a foresty green as well, which is really pretty. Um, the only thing I found with this yarn, well, I don't know if it's the yarn or my knitting, but the collar is quite square. It doesn't seem to have quite the same drape as wool I think if it was a wool it would be more kind of rounded but I'm only guessing that that is the yarn not really sure yeah so the collar turned out a little bit of a like a square boat shape instead of like a gentle curve um oh look I didn't weave in my ends because I haven't worn it yet so oh jaws But it is really pretty. And let me give you a close up of the yarn. It's got like little speckles, or like dark pinks. I'm just gonna turn the camera down brightness a bit. Oops, does that help? It doesn't, does it? That is weird. But anyway, it's really beautiful. I would highly recommend this yarn. Um, what's the washing instructions? Because that was quite important. Machine washable at 30, not tumble dryable. It's 35% wool, 20% acrylic, 20% polyamide, 25% viscose. Gosh. Uh, 328 yards for 300 meters. I think it's pretty good. I can't remember the cost, but it was good value. I, I came across it through lovely Sam of Betsy Makes. She made she made a really gorgeous cardigan out of it. And she was saying how lovely it was. So I thought I'd give it a go. And yeah, totally agree. It's lovely. But this pattern, oh, oh I just love this so much. I'm going to make another one of these. I've just decided. So that's all my finished things. I'm going to hang this on the exercise bike, which is just there. Right, what else have I got to say? Not a lot, really. Um, Favourite things. Okay, so I have been really, really enjoying a programme or series called Clarkson's Farm. And what's his name? What's his first name? Jeremy Clarkson. Mm, I haven't always, he's, he can be very opinionated. Um, he used to be one of the presenters of Top Gear. I think there's still, there's, he's still in a series of cars, about cars and stuff. I'm not quite sure, but George loved the Top Gear, the old Top Gear. He didn't really like the newer Top Gear. He liked it when it was Jeremy Clarkson and two others. And they were all quite funny. Um, but Jeremy has bought a farm and the whole programme is about him learning to be a farmer. It's just funny and kind of, it's got some heartwarming moments where I think, oh, he does, he has got a really soft side, perhaps. Um, but it does make me laugh. And there's um, another farmer on from a neighbouring farm called Caleb. And he is just so funny. And there's another man with the, the funniest haircut from the 70s who has such, I don't know what accent it would be, I can't remember where they are, such a broad accent that I can't understand a word he says and I don't think Jeremy can most of the time. But it's so funny. But I tell you what, it's really opened my eyes to how hard work farming is and how hard farmers have to work just to kind of break even and you're never quite sure if you're going to because of weather and bugs and yeah it, it was I really really I'm loving it I think I've got one episode left but it's just funny it just makes me giggle um yeah so I would recommend that if you want something kind of 
you don't have to think too much, have a bit of a giggle. And there's a couple of sad bits in it, which I did get upset, but yeah, it's, it's brilliant. My other favorite thing at the moment is listening to Anne of Green Gables on Audible. Oh, it's so lovely. I'm way into it. I, I don't know where I am actually because I've been listening. I have I listen to it for half an hour every night before I go to bed. And I remember when I was a child, there used to be a program, a children's program called Jack and Ori. And it was basically, I think generally it was a famous person who read a bedtime story or a story. And I used to love it. It's so nice being read a story. I don't remember as a child being read stories at all, actually, apart from on Jack and Ori. And uh, I loved it. I loved it. It was like escapism. And uh, I was a bit of a poor reader when I was younger. I'm dyslexic. Not hugely dyslexic. George, my George, he's hugely dyslexic. But I'm a bit dyslexic. And I never could really get past the first page of a book. So I couldn't get myself into that make-believe world. But watching Jack and Ori was just a little piece of heaven. Anyway, so when I go to sleep now, I'm really tired at the moment. So, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is a bit tired today. Um, I set my audible timer for 30 minutes and I just lie there for 30 minutes. Sometimes I fall asleep and then the next day I have to find my place again. I just listened to Anne of Green Gables. Oh, it's so heartwarming and beautiful. So much kindness and oh, it's just gorgeous. And obviously that's by Ellen Montgomery. And just her writing is just so kind of delicate and gentle, I'd say. I would be a rubbish reviewer, but I'm telling you it's very nice. <laughs> and also it's great value because it's one credit. I think I pay 7 dollars this is not an Audible advert by the way, I'm not sponsored. I think I pay something like 7 dollars a month and I get one book, but this book is 73 hours. So much pleasure it's given me. And I listen to it in the mornings when I'm getting ready and I love it so much. And I've just started thinking and talking in Anne language quite a lot. So that's, yeah, that's my favourite things. I um, don't think I've got much else to say apart from, oh, oh my goodness. I felt so weird and awkward in my last episode when I told you about my coffee account. I still think it's Kofi, but anyway. Um, where you can donate to my channel. I felt so awkward about it. I, oh, I found it so hard to talk about. And even now, it's, my heart is going faster. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the really kind and generous donations. I really can't believe that you want to do that. <laughs> It's honestly, it's so heartwarming and it has, it has been really needed recently. <laughs> I've had a lot of expensive things going on with um, So Sweet Violet. Um, so yes, thank you, thank you, thank you a million times over if you've donated. And thank you in advance if you would like to donate. Bad, it's so bad talking about it. Okay, maybe from Jules. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say. Well, I could chatter on, but you probably wouldn't want to hear all the chatter. Um, Bryony's downstairs sewing on seek. Oh, yes, there is something I wanted to say. We are going to be having a exciting shop update. Before the end of August, we don't know the date yet, but because Bryony has come to So Sweet Violet and she is my sweet bee, I've always called her that, and um, we're going to do a sweet bee shop update. 
don't know how I nearly forgot this. She would have been cross with me. She would have told me off if I'd have gone downstairs and not mentioned this. So we are working on bee-themed project bags with sequins. You'll see, in there's a little vlog at the end, so you'll see a little bit of that. We are making kits. Hexagon, no, hang on. English paper piecing kits to make these beautiful things. Um, so the kit in the kit you'll get the frame, the fabric hexagons, and we're doing Liberty and we're doing just kind of summery colours like a flowery meadow. You will get a needle, you will get a glue stick, so you can either choose to glue based or sewing based, <laughs> stitch based. Um, is that everything? I'm sure there's something else. Oh, a little bee rubber stamp, the most adorable, teeny tiny little bumblebee rubber stamp, or honeybee, I think it's probably a honeybee actually. Um, and, and an ink pad as well, and that will come with instructions, so we are super excited about those. We have planned to make some lavender sachet stacks, um, stitch marker sets, it's, it's all going to be bee themed and I am so excited. So we have been working like the clappers. Um, yeah. I um, Last weekend I ended up in bed all day on Saturday because I overdid it. I need to learn to pace myself, I find it hard. I get excited and I just love what I do, especially now Bryony's here too just fun so yeah, I do need to learn to pace myself a bit um, which is probably why I feel a little bit I feel a bit like a jelly inside my body a bit shaky weird anyway I think that is it um, thank you for watching thank you as always for all your kind comments um, oh and thank you for the ideas for the the name of the bank. I think it's going to be called the Bank of Many Blossoms. And I'll show you a bit more of the garden possibly next time. Um, but we've planted roses now and lavender, um, some herbs and other bits. So I will share more about that next time. Mind you, we've been concentrating on that part of the garden and the rest has turned into a jungle. You can't blink, can you, in the summer when you have a garden? It just it's gone crazy. Anyway, now I'm in chatter mode, so I just need to sip it, say goodbye, and um, stay safe and well, and I hope you get lots of crafting done. Bye! <music>